Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina, and tonight I wanted to make a video covering shortwave radio. It's actually one of my favorite hobbies, something to play with, something I've actually been working on behind the scenes is putting up what's called a long wire antenna, and I'll get into that here a little bit later, but shortwave, shortwave radio. So let's talk about American standard radio. That is AM band, and then it was joined by the FM band, and these are broadcast bands, commercial bands. So what you get on the AM and FM broadcast bands is stuff that the FCC has allowed you the honor of listening to, unless you're listening to a pirate station. And this is the way that radio has been for many years. But alongside of it, and ever shrinking as the years went on, was shortwave. Shortwave is similar to the AM band in fidelity. So uh, if you're used to listening to AM radio late at night, those clear channel stations that kind of travel across hundreds of miles, they, the voices kind of fade in and out of the static. They fade in and out of the night, which is what I feel like is one of the best ways to listen to radio, especially talk radio. That shortwave is very similar to that. In fact, it's, it's, uh, it's just kind of a continuation. AM is the midway, uh, midwave, and, and shortwave is shortwave, right? So what we get with a shortwave radio is the ability to listen. Instead of that skip being hundreds of miles, like a, like a 50,000 watt AM station might allow you to have, you're going to get thousands of miles. And sometimes that means you're listening to stations all the way overseas or around the world, quite literally. And that is actually an interesting part of the history of why shortwave isn't as popular as it once was. It's a history you may not know. Shortwave was popular in the United States all the way up to World War II, and then in the preceding years to World War II, there was a kind of quiet push from the federal government to maybe not promote shortwave quite as much as the regular AM band, because they didn't want people hearing the voice of Russia, well, not then, but I don't want to say the word of the voice of you-know-who, because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a bad word still to this day, but the voice of Germany, let's say. So there were reasons why we wouldn't want people to maybe feel akin to their motherland. And so by listening to the nightly news from downtown, you know, wherever, that might allow you to keep the, the faith. You know, we wanted integration here in the United States at the time. And that's a good thing. I'm not going to argue with the way they did it. I don't think they did it the right way, but I understand the philosophy. They wanted people to assimilate to American culture. And the best way to do that is by eating a healthy diet of American news and American way of life, right? But it still existed. It wasn't like they went and rounded up all the old radios, and it wasn't like they outright banned the stuff, but it just wasn't something that maintained popularity. Now, through the war, there were a lot of people that were able to use shortwave to listen to what was going on overseas. If you wanted updates, obviously, you, you could go to the, uh, the, the theater and get your weekly update on progress in World War II. Or if you were lucky enough to have a shortwave receiver at your house, you could listen to what was going on from around the world. And it led for some very interesting stuff. There's a lot of reading you can do on the subject. I don't know if there's a ton of it on, on you know, uh, the internet at large, but there's old books that talk about that way of life and what things were like. And, and you can see pictures from that era of people huddled around uh, old tube radios. In fact, if you go way back in the catalog, I have a beautiful shortwave tube, ra tube radio. I have a 1934 Aarons uh, radio, and, uh, and it's, it's gorgeous. It's, the thing still works. I had it restored. And you can listen to around the world. In fact, the dial, here's a picture of it here, has all the locations around the world of where those stations were broadcasting at that time. And some of them, to this day, are still at those locations, which is really cool. So what would you want to use? After the war ended, uh, you know, less and less there was that need. We, you know, television was invented, that new medium that sucked us all in. And then sometime in the 70s, the FM band was brought in. And, and even AM has really fallen out of favor as a way to listen to information on the air. So we have all these pieces of equipment that you can see here. But what do you do with them now? And the answer is there's still a lot out there. There is nowhere near as much out there as there was, say, 10, 15, 20 years ago, but there's still a lot out there. The thing with short band is it's it's a bit temperamental. It, it's there when you maybe don't need it and not there when you do need it. You can get a nice one like this. This is a DX100 general coverage receiver. This one has some really neat features. Real fine tuning control. You have a, ma a big dial, a real fine dial, band selection. And then this one also has, and I do recommend if you're going to get a brand new radio that you try to find one that does have uh, sideband capabilities. 
This one does have CW and sideband, standby, AM, and then it does have a version of noise blanker, which, which doesn't really work all that well, to be honest with you, but it's there. And, and so we do have our volume control and our on off over there. So it's a pretty nice receiver for its time. They did end up making a DX200, a DX300. My neighbor has a DX300. The definite benefit of that is digital display. So you're really talking about pinpoint, you know, this thing, you know, it has frequency drift, which means the station, sometimes you have to kind of do a little readjustment there where a digital receiver is pretty much going to lock on. I picked that up at a ham fest for $20. You can certainly uh, keep your eye out for them. A lot of times they get mistaken for CB or ham radio equipment. And so they might be priced out of your price range or they might just uh, not even be visible. People might list them improperly of, on eBay or whatnot. There were other types of shortwave radios that were available back in the 80s especially. And that here's two examples of them here. This is the Patrolman SW60 from Radio Shack. This one here, a really nice. The reason they went with Patrolman is instead of being straight shortwave, this one also includes our VHF and UHF bands. So it does have shortwave as one of the ways, but it also includes some of the, um, what we would consider to be scanner bands. So this would be somebody who wanted to listen to the action with the local police. And again, pre-digital, this is an analog setup. I like the fact it had this little push down light. This one is functional, but the, uh, the dial is broken. So you kind of just have to wing where you are. It does have squelch control and volume control. And uh, it's a really cool radio. It does have a place for an external antenna as well. And I'll get into why that might be something you would want to have here in a bit. But I'll go ahead and put that down. Here's another example. This is a no-name. This was actually branded. Uh, I saw this radio, or you come across this radio oftentimes uh, with many different names. And it's very groovy looking, if you don't mind. I'll make a video on this. This is non-functional, unfortunately. This one is, is called uh, Rhapsody or something like that, but it has a lot of bands and it's almost like the general coverage receiver. AM, CB, shortwave one and two, FM. This one also has TV channels one through or two through 13, air, uh, weather broadcast, public, uh, police broadcast. I mean, it, it has a lot going on there. Something to be aware of, television broadcast no longer playing on analog. So this was, you could pick up TV stations and listen to the TV station through these radios back in the day, but that is no longer the case. Uh, so just be aware of that as well. This one also has a ton of features. It does have an external antenna pickup. I don't know why it has a mic because you can't transmit with it. But again, these things were just like, they would, they threw these out under so many different brands. It was crazy. It does, oh, I guess there it is. It does have a PA mode. So I guess you could talk through the speaker and use this as a miniature uh, speaker system. So interesting. I never noticed that before, to be honest with you. Oftentimes when you find these, these are non-functional. They, they weren't built well and they were built under 100 million different brands. I think these were all Taiwanese made. I'm not positive. They might've been Hong Kong made, but it was very popular design and not an inexpensive one, to be honest with you. This one does also have a uh, coarse tuning and the inside of this knob allows you to do fine tuning as well, which was a, a nice feature to have. It does have a meter, which this one does not have. So that's kind of cool. And lastly, on this one, it did have a, a, a ferrite core antenna that you could, you know, instead of moving the whole radio, you could move that around to get better reception. And then your regular antenna was there. So cool. This one came with a strap. So it's like people carry this out in the woods and you can see it has like kind of a rack mount thing. Obviously they were going for that rugged look and good for them for that. But, uh, as far as reception goes, I've only come across one or two of these over the years that actually worked. I found them to be about on par with this. Uh, I just like this layout a little better, but if you can get one of these that works, they're a good radio. The Patrolman actually is a really good radio. Just be mindful that a lot of the uh, VHF and UHF police scanner bands are now gone digital, so you, you may not in your area get a lot of signals that you can actually listen to out there. Lastly, I want to talk about this. This one's missing a little cover, and I have probably five of these things. I just grab this one's out here all the time. And this is a battery-powered one. This is something you can buy right now for less than $10 online. And it works. It has a built-in antenna. It runs off of two AA batteries in the back, and it is very simple. It has seven shortwave band availability. You move through the band here. It also includes AM and FM. And then on the side, you have an earphone jack volume and controls so 
This actually works nearly as good as this. It's just a little harder to tune those signals because again, it's not digitally controlled, but unlike this that has that fine tuning and this that has that fine tuning, this one does not. And so as a result, it can be a little touchy. You can see how small the bandwidth here is. So just a slight move of the finger and you've changed frequencies. I would say if you're just interested in playing and seeing what's out there, it's not a bad idea to pick one of these up. This does not have a hook for an external antenna. However, this is a Grundig. Huh. I don't actually believe this is a Grundig. It says it's a Mini World 100 PE. I'm gonna bet a dollar it's just a knockoff, but it says it's a Grundig. Anyway, you can take this antenna and take a little alligator clip hooked to that and run it to a larger antenna if you'd like. And, uh, and it works pretty well. I have another one over here I want to show, and this one I've had in my collection for many years. In fact, this was my first shortwave radio, kind of got me hooked. This is an Eton E10, and I have another one inside that has uh, got shortwave capabilities. But this is a great radio. You can see the batteries are still on it. Digital readout, programmable. You can save your uh, hundreds of memories if you choose to. You can have it set up to alarms. It does have a nice built-in speaker. Uh, fine and coarse tuning and volume control and squelch and all the rest. Then we have a nice built-in antenna, but it does also have on this side the ability to add an extra antenna. You, you can have your power supply and there's other, there's just other stuff. And again, I'll make a video just on this because this is a great radio. This, I would say, if you wanted to skip the entry level, skip the $10 one and move up to something in the $50 or $60 range, you wanted something new, you didn't want to mess with older equipment, which is fine. I would probably go ahead and get something along this line. You really move up in price when you try to find something modern that has sideband capabilities. So just be aware of that. The reason you would want sideband is that uh, you can pick up ham conversations. Some of the shortwave bands are now ham bands, or probably are, always were. And so you can pick up san, uh, ham band conversations, but a lot of those conversations take place on sideband instead of regular AM. So. That's just something to be in mind. But if you're looking for world broadcasts, if you're looking for the voice of Russia or the voice of China or the voice of wherever, then this would do just fine for that. In fact, I've listened to English-speaking North Korean uh, propaganda radio on this thing, and uh, it's hilarious. Uh, it's I love the way, and it just, I love it. And that gets into the second to last part of this video, which is what is out there, and it's like, it's weird, and I love weird, and that's why I listen to radio in the first place. It's because we have what we are told by our media, right? And then we have places like YouTube and Shoutcast where individuals will voice their own opinion and have their own shows to give their spin on it, but you can't help but exist in a, in a biased bubble. The news that we get and the opinions that we form on it are all still in the giant bubble of America or whatever country you happen to live in. And so when you listen to propaganda, as we call it, which is exactly what our media is here to other countries, is you listen to, say, the voice of France, and you listen to their take on the same situation that you're hearing here, it's something you're not going to hear anywhere else. And so it gives you a very unique perspective on world events. Right now, as I'm making this, it's still late summer, and um, you know there's a lot of stuff going on around the world. So there's a lot of things that you can hear a different perspective on, maybe hear not just our side or our ally side, but even our enemy's side, which gives you um, an, interesting, an interesting outlook on what might really be going on in the world. So I really enjoy it for that reason. And like I said, the voice of Korea, the voice of China, the voice of Russia, there's the voice of France, there's, there's all these official publications there's a ton of religious content out there, both American and foreign. And, and really, I think probably 40% of what's out there, you won't be able to understand unless you're multilingual. I speak English only, and so I look for those uh, broadcasts. But there is a lot of foreign language broadcasts. So if you're somebody who is living here in the United States or in any country, and your tongue is not the native tongue, well, you can go on there and get a little piece of home. You can listen to what's going on in your language and be more familiar with what's going on in the world. So I love that about it. And lastly, I want to talk to you about like antennas because these do come with antennas, but other than the most basic model, they all have the ability to hook up an antenna to them. And there's a reason for that. Shortwave loves to have a long antenna to pick up those signals. Because we are talking about relatively weak signals, if they have traveled many thousands of miles, and atmospheric conditions, those signals tend to 
plateau and crescendo and just kind of up and down through that noise floor. And so it can become, for some people, my wife, she doesn't enjoy listening to shortwave because it's hard for her brain to pick out the voices as they fade in and out of the night. For me, that's the, the beauty of it, honestly. But if you want to get more signals, if you want to get more signals more clearly, you're going to want to look into something called a long wire antenna. The good news is a long wire antenna is exactly what it sounds like. Because you're not going to be transmitting on any of these radios, it doesn't have to have a certain frequency resonance, so it doesn't have to be a certain length. A long wire antenna is a long wire, and so the longer the wire you have, the better that that thing is going to pick up signals. I am actually working on about a 50 to 75 foot long long wire antenna setup that I want to put along the side of my property and run into the house so I can use it with that beautiful Ward Airlane um, uh, you know, tube and, uh, radio that I have in there. And so that's that's kind of been my that's going to be my one of my winter projects this year. Once all the trees die back, I want to get in there and get up on the trees and and run that wire. So you can do that. There are companies that sell wind-up ones. In fact, I have one that came with one of mine. I think it's a 25-foot wire. And it's super simple to take that wire, take a couple thumbtacks, and just run it along the inside of a wall of your house. And you'd be surprised at the increase in reception you'll get just off of something like that. So it's, it's something you definitely, again, if you, if you get into it and you're like, I don't really hear anything. Well, that might be a reason. And, and part of that not hearing anything has to do with location, right? You would think where I'm at, where I pick up great AM signals off the CB band, I'm able to do some ham stuff, and uh, and I, I don't really do well on uh, medium wave radio stations here. It's not very good reception, even though I have no power interruptions, no no like uh, city lights, no, no interference from those major electrical things. In fact, where I lived, which was closer to a town before had much better reception. So there is some of that hit or miss. So uh, anytime I go out of town, I'm always sure to bring one of these radios along with me to play with, you know, at a hotel or whatnot and listen. Because a lot of times you'd be surprised you can hit, pick up stations that you weren't able to pick up 50 miles away, even though both those places are, are listening to signals that are thousands of miles away. That's it for tonight. This is your introduction to shortwave radio. As the months go on into winter, I will be sure to break down and do individual videos on these, show you the features and functions of each of them. And I do have several more inside the house that I'll cover as well. A lot of them that have short band or shortwave are inside in the house right now because I do tend to listen to them quite a bit. I'm Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's something that I've had some requests on and been wanting to do for a while. So stick around and I'll get to the rest here shortly. Take care. Something that needs a